along with the daffodil flowers and so forth. So there's so many things that we can do this afternoon. But brethren, every Sunday, what is coming into your mind every Sunday? Sunday is a church day. Amen. Sunday is, you know, before I used to post in a daily basis, like thank God for another day. So Sunday, we can say thank God, it's Sunday. Amen. Because it's Sunday, it's about time for God and it's about time for us to learn the word of God and it's about to, uh, for us to worship our living God. Amen. So now we are going to our message for today. Uh, by the way, brethren, for this month, uh, we started the, the series of messages and it talks about the, uh, um, we can say, they call it uh, church appreciation for our church attenders, members, leaders, and servants. So last uh, Sunday, Pastor Nelson has given a message. It's, it's all about, what's the message? The importance of our church ministries and attenders okay now we will find out today our topic for today is all about um message for today is the importance of our church members so before that uh, let me read you the passage in ephesians chapter 1 verse uh, 1 it says it says here paul an apostle of christ jesus by the will of god to God's holy people in the vessels, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. These two verses are talking about Paul. He was sending a letter to the people of Ephesus. And they are, they call them Ephesians. So we as a born again Christians that belongs to New Zealand Christian Fellowship, we can say that we are also if they are Ephesians, they are here in Christ Church, Christians in this place of New Zealand. And on the next part here, I would like everyone to read with me about what Paul has said to the people of Ephesus. Let me read, you, uh, let me read all together. It says in verse 3, Praise for his peaceful blessings in Christ. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight, in love. He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will, to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the ones He loves. You know, when I was reading this passage, how Apostle Paul has sent this letter to the Ephesians, it's a very nice words to hear. Because Paul was talking into a congregation like us. And the message that he's sending, if you read it from verse 3 onward, it's like more on seeing the goodness, seeing the working of God in the presence of the congregation. And as we move forward to the next part, verse 7 onward, let us read all together. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, in accordance with the riches of God's grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good nature, which he purpose in Christ. Verse 10, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven, and on earth under Christ. It's a very interesting message that we hear, we have read from Apostle Paul that he has given to the Ephesians. You know, brethren, my prayer also that if we don't know, after 10 years, maybe some of you already on another place or country, when you send a message to our church, New Zealand Christian Fellowship, it's so nice to hear some messages saying that, you know, they can still see how our church is growing. Maybe by the time we are not only 20 plus, maybe by the time after 10 years, we are more than 100. Do you believe? Amen. Amen. I do believe with that. Because at the moment we are only more than two years, 
and we are in the process of building up our members. And as we are building up our members, we are seeing a future leaders in our church. And I do believe that one day, one by one, we are going out in this place just to share the word of God with the other people around us. Our message for today is all about the importance of church members. First thing, what is member? What did they, what, what is the meaning of member? Member is a person, animal, or plant belonging to a particular group. You need to be part of the group so that you will be called a member. Brother Rolly can answer this. Example, member of particular group. Before you can become a member of a particular group in the physical fitness doing gym, what is the first thing to become a member? You need to sign up the application and what? Pay your weekly or monthly uh, share so that you can use their uh, facility. You need to be a member first. What about in basketball? Brother Chris is one of the, uh, we can say, basketball enthusiasts in our midst. And when you go for a basketball team, before they will accept you, what is the thing that you need to do? You need to show your how you play. If you are a good player, then automatically they will get you to be part of the team. And if you are part of the team, you are now a member of that particular group. The other one is fraternities. Who knows fraternities here in the Philippines? There are some, what are, what are those names? There is Taugama, there is Apro and support, Afro and support. But what you will notice with the fraternities, brethren, with the fraternities, before he join, what he, what they're doing? Sometimes they will do some hit in the back before you become a member. But not only for that, you need to follow the leaders first. They will tell you what are the things that needs to be done. If you will not follow, then you may not be accepted as a part of that group. But we really thank God. In the presence of God, when you go into a church, you are attending regularly, and you are sharing your love to the brethren, and you are raising God to be in the center of your life, you are part of our church, or being a member of that church. That's the good thing. There's no way that somebody will hit you first. Okay, you are now a member. Okay? The worst thing that can happen is this. I remember, the good thing when I was in high school, I was a very, first or second year, I was very small. And during that high school time, fraternities they are getting those who are big, strong, and they can fight. Since that I was small, nobody is taking me. Why I have to that? I was not part of the uh, fraternity group. But I remember one time, I was walking along with my friend who was having a big body. We're going home, we're planning to go to our place, and all of a sudden, a group of fraternity groups, they're running and they hit the back of my friend. He was sitting at the back and then looking at and front. What happened? Why? Why? You know what they are saying to my friend? Why are you not attending in our meeting? That's fraternity. Because the guy is not attending the meeting, he got the punishment of hitting on the backside. But going to the church environment, when we have something or we have done something wrong in the presence of our brethren or one of the members of our church. We talk to our brother. We talk to our sister. What we are saying, we encourage them. Sister, brother, even you have done some uh, problem, but we believe that God can still change you. Amen? That's, you can see the, the difference easily. How God is giving us a better life, a better way of living when we are going into the presence of our God. The importance of church members, let me read to you first in Matthew 16, verse 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, which is the body of Jesus Christ, I will build my church, and the gates of hate will not overcome it. And that was the beginning when Jesus Christ was said that the church must be established. And that church is under the name of Jesus Christ. Here, the importance of church members. Without church members, what do you think? What will happen in the church? 
Number one, there is no church at all, right? If Pastor Joe and Pastor Nelson were coming here in the church and there's no members that are coming, can we start the service? It may not. For sure that what we need to do is to go out and peace some lost soul outside and to bring in the church. Without church members, there's no church. Church members gives life to the church. Amen? Tell the person next to you. Church members gives life to the church. You know why? You know what I have noticed in our congregation before the service, I can hear people, brethren are talking. Which is good in, to hear about it because you can see the presence of our members. After the service, we are talking, we are eating. I can hear the voices, different talks and so on. It's a joy for the leaders. There is life in the church when people or brethren are talking in the church. Can you imagine that after the service, Pastor Joel and Pastor Nelson, we are eating together in a single table and there's no members? We cannot call that as a church. The church must co consist of pastors, leaders, and a members or a congregation. Meaning, gives light. Church members gives light to the church. Secondly, grace joy to church leaders. Why the church leaders are feeling excited or there is a joy when the members are there? Because you can serve people. We can share the word of God. We can lead people. Brethren, we are here to learn more, not only the word of God, but they are giving us the wisdom on how we can do things in our life. Lastly, it creates joy to our God. Amen? Do you believe with that? Amen. When you are attending a church, do you believe that it creates joy to our God? Amen. Amen? Here in Luke 15, Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Brethren, in our church, all our members are important. All of you, if you are missing in our center or in our midst, we want you to come back. We want you to be part of our service again. So that we can grow together in God's glory. Ephesians 6, 2, 19 says here, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. I remember my friend in uh, Bahrain, what, what, he, what she said, I have now two citizenship. One is citizen of the Philippines and the second one is citizen of the heaven. Do you believe that we are citizens of the heaven? Amen. 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 Another friend of mine, she is in Canada. What she said, I have now three citizenship. Citizen in the Philippines, citizen in Canada, and citizen in heaven, or in the presence of God. So that's why, brethren, this verse, Ephesians 2.19, this is very important for each and every one of us. That as we go, as we grow in the presence of God in our church, for sure, that we are no longer foreigners and strangers. When you say foreigners or strangers, when you're coming here, you don't know anyone here, and then you just go out. You're coming here, you're learning, you're having a friends, you, are, you have love by our brethren, then you can feel the presence of God in the midst of our church. And you are member of this household, which is our church. Next slide. Always remember, brethren, that the church is a family. And secondly, God expects you to be a member 
of the church family. Amen? Always keep that in mind. Remember, we're like a big family. In one of our members' heart, we are helping them in the right way. I remember Brother Elmar, the husband of Sister Ed, when they were here in Christ Church, Brother Elmar was having a problem with another person and they're trying, they're arguing about them getting the vehicle and so forth. Sister Ed was called us, can you help us to come in? We went there, Brother Sherman also, he went there, and some of our brother Mark, he went there, and we're, we're helping Brother Elmar during that time, and I can see in the heart of Brother Elmar and Sister Ed, they have seen the support of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Support in a sense that we will fight in the person, no, but to support them morally, what is the right thing with the situation that they have during that time. And they're very happy and they have managed to go out on that situation in the right way with the help of our brethren. That's why brethren always remember that God expects you to be a member of a church family. Amen? Without church members, we cannot spread the word of God. That will be pursued. Church members, because of your presence, we can worship God together. Amen? It says here, in Matthew 4, verse 10, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Why it says serve Him only? No other gods. Keep in mind, brethren, when you are serving in this church, you are not serving me or the other pastors or anyone in this room. We are serving our God in heaven. So that's why don't think about it that you are serving me in this church or our pastors. All of us are serving our God. So that's why it says here, worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Number two, church members can grow in LG or life group, Bible study and Sunday school. Who amongst you are already involved in LG or Light Group? Who amongst you are involved in Bible study? Us. Who amongst you are involved in Sunday school? Some of you. It says here, it's very important with our church members, what will happen when we continue attending with our church service? We grow spiritually. Who wants to grow spiritually? Amen. All of us, we want to grow. Brethren, I can imagine myself, when I was star started attending in the church in Bahrain, I was very new in the church, and I don't have any friends. I was alone. The people who guided me are those people who are involved in the church during that time. Now in our present time, we are members of the church. If there are newcomers in our church, we really love sharing the word of God with the other people. We really love to let them stay in our church because we want them also to grow as we grow in Christ. Hebrews 6.1, it says, Therefore, let us leave the elementary, elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. What does it mean to you? We know already that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He died on the cross to save us so that we can have an eternal life. When it says, go on to maturity, as we know that, as we accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the next part that we need to do is to grow spiritually. And to grow spiritually is by means of going deeper and deeper and deeper in the Word of God. And that can only happen once we continue to learn the Word of God. Number three, without church members, there's no pastor. Because pastors cannot share any word of God if nobody's there. No one can be called pastors, but he don't have anything to do the pastoring or sharing the word of God. 
I cannot stand here in front of you and nobody is here, but I will talk so many things. It's useless. I'm talking to myself. Without church members, there's no pastors. Ephesians 4, 11, 12, Jesus Christ said, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built. Body of Christ meaning is a church members or a congregation. So meaning, as Paul says here, that Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors. So what is the job of the pastors? Is to equip his people for works, to train people for works. That's why that's why what you will notice, we are trying to continue to share the word of God with you at the same time. We are involving you with the life group, Bible study, and even the Sunday school, so that you will go more deeper in the word of God. Amen. Body of Christ is a church members, and church members it fulfills the life of a pastor. Wherever you go, it's very hard to say that they're a pastor, but if they're not pastoring anyone, what is the use of being a pastor? Pastor was called as a pastor because they're pastoring someone or a group of people. And we really thank God for the presence of our members with that. It says in John 10, 1 to 6, The good shepherd and his sheep. Very truly I tell you, Paris is anyone who does not enter the sheep by bed by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and lists them up. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ is the one who was giving this message or passage. If you should remember that we want to imitate Jesus Christ, amen? As we imitate Jesus Christ, we, as a pastor, we are imitating Jesus Christ and we are looking also with this passage that we as a leader or pastors of the church, we want everyone to be part of our congregation. We lead them, as you can see here, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, meaning we are not calling our brethren with different names. We are not calling Sister Alma in a different name. We are not calling Brother Marlon in a different name. Being a leader of this church, we need to call our members according to their name and we lead them. And verse 4, this is a very exciting one. It says here, when he has brought all his own, bringing out, as an example, is going out in this church, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. So as you can see here, that it is more on going out in one part. When you look at it, it seems like evangelizing the people outside with the help of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are not letting only the members to go out and fight for the loss, but we as a leader of the church, it is also our responsibility to help you to go out and win soul. Amen? And in verse 11 it says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Church members receive the word of God and it depends their faith in God. It says in 2 Peter 3, 18, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Brethren, as you continue to attend in this church, for sure that you will grow deeper in your faith in God. Anyone can say that you grow spiritually? Amen. Amen. I can say that all of you, you grow spiritually. 
You learn so many things in our church. You are going deeper. And I do believe that one day, God will also use you. Amen? Tell to the person next to you, God will use you. Oh, brother, this nobody is in, in the sign. Brother Martin is there. Brethren, I do believe that all of us will be used by our God. Do you believe with that? I can tell you directly, majority of us right now are used by God. In a different ministry that we have. And even, you know, the people or the brethren who are taking these equipments to keep in the box and bring it there, it's a ministry. The one who's arranging the table and so forth, it's a ministry. As we do that with joy, that we're serving God, it's a ministry to our Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Last one, without church members, no existence of God. Can you imagine, brethren, in the whole world, there's no church? There's no Christian church? If there's no Christian church, meaning, there's no God at all. There's no existence of God. Now, how you can prove that there is God? How you can prove to yourself that we have a creator? For me, brethren, one of the proofs of the existence of God, for me, Especially in the evening. When you look in the sky, there's so many stars. Small, big one, the moon is there and so forth. Can you imagine the vast galaxy that we have? Do you think all of them will stand there together as their own? Someone created things. Some people, they said, they believe in evolution. What is evolution? That we, they believe that we came from a man or a woman. But can you imagine, brethren, but why until now the monkey are still or apes are still existing if we are evolved already with the new, like it's like a human being, what they are saying. So we meaning, brethren, we need to believe first the existence of God. And Maybe from your side, you have your own way, you have your own proof, how you believe in God. By looking around only, without looking in the Bible, we can easily see that God created things by Himself. And as we read here, in Genesis 1, 1 to 5, it says here, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So we have to prove now. One is, when we're looking outside, especially in the evening, we prove the presence of God, existence of God. Second thing is when we read the Bible. The first book in the Bible that we are depending our belief in Christ Jesus. Amen? So you are sure now 100% that there's an existence of God? Amen. 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 Okay, next one. Church members shows the existence of God. Brethren, the reason that's why you're coming here in the church is not only to do other things, but you believe already in your heart that there is God. Amen? There is God. There is God who is watching us wherever we go. You're coming in the church to show to yourself that God exists. Amen? All of us, we believe God exists. And church members want to know more about God, right? We cannot say only that we know God, but we need to know more about God. We need to know more about God as we continue to go deeper and to study the Word of God and to hear more messages about the Word of God. It says in Romans 10, 13 to 14, Everyone who calls on the name of the, of the, name of the Lord will be saved. 
How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Brethren, in our church, for sure, one thing that will that we cannot leave every Sunday is to share the word of God with you. Some messages, messages are already directly with the word of God and sometimes we are adding some experiences or lessons so it to incorporate on that messages. But at the end of the day, we are sharing the word of God with you. We are helping you to grow deeper. As you can read in this passage, you can easily see Romans 10, 13, what it says? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And what is the name of the Lord? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Okay? That's why in the Philippines, there is a one big church. What is the name of the big church in the Philippines? Jesus is Lord. Or they call themselves J-I-L. Church members want to become righteous. The reason that's why you are continuously attending in the church, you want to become righteous, right? When you say you want to become righteous, you want to make sure that what you're doing is correct in the eyes of God. Amen? It says here in Proverbs 21, 21, Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. That's why each and every one of us we have the responsibility as we journey with our faith in God. God wants us to learn more with His Word. And at the end, we can see when we become more righteous in the eyes of God, what are the benefits that we're getting? Number one, finds life, prosperity, and honor. Who wants to find Good life. Amen. Amen. Who wants to find prosperity? Amen. Amen. And the last one, who wants to have honor? Amen. 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 And that honor is an honor coming from God because we follow Him and we see His presence in our need. Now, brethren, as we know already, that these important church members, the importance of church members, that without church members, number one, there is no church. Without church members, we cannot spread the word of God. Without church members, there's no need for the pastors. And last one, without church members, no existence of God. You know, brethren, I do believe that each and every one of us, God has brought us in this place. If you can see yourself in this church as one of the members, what is the next step that you can do for yourself aside from attending a regular Sunday service. What are the things that you need to go to do to deeper your faith in God? You know, brethren, Pastor Joel and Pastor Nelson we will not be here after maybe 20 or 30 years. We need our members to grow. We want to see maybe after 10 years, Brother Jonathan will also stand here in front and will share the word of God in front of us. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Maybe after five years, Brother Chris, we will see him <laughs> leading a Bible study. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Maybe after two years, Brother Marlon. You know. We'll start his own life group. Amen. 
next week. <laughs> next week. <laughs> Spare your advance, huh? Maybe Brother Roy will start his own group also. Amen. 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 But brethren, what is the key? You know, if you have a very beautiful car, can you tell me a nice car? Ferrari, what else? Tuvalis. Tuvalis? <laughs> What's that? Duranos. Duranos. <laughs> if you have a very nice car, if you don't have the key to use it, it will run? No. Brethren, the key to success, to become a leader, or to become a very useful person in the church. The key is to go deeper in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So now, finally, just to summarize our message, can you ask yourself, what is the thing that you need to do to be part of the leadership of this church. Into yourself, don't answer me now. But ask yourself, what are the things that you need to do so that one day you will become a leader in this church? That's a good point, Sister Aloha. Learn, study, please involve yourself in the life group, Bible study, Meaning, we need to grow. Brethren, I'll tell you one thing in my life. I will not stand in front of you if I did not do a lot of trainings so that I can also share the Word of God in front of you. And I do believe, if I had managed to do that, and you do that also, one thing, you can share the word of God boldly or without hesitation to the people around you. Amen? Amen. Maybe you will see Sister Aloha. She's shouting outside in the city center. I want to share the word of God with people around here. Can you do that? You know, I do believe when God moves us, when God moves us, we can also move other people to believe in God. Amen? Amen. Before you know Jesus Christ, somebody has approached you, somebody has talked to you, before you know God. Now, since that we know God, our next part is to learn the Word of God, go deeper, study the Word of God, and share it to the other people. Brethren, keep this in mind. The moment that you become a leader in any small group, you're already sharing the Word of God to the people. You have the opportunity to share the Word of God to the people. Especially, normally we are starting in the family. We share the Word of God to the family, and then after that, to our extended family, and then to our friends, to our loved ones, until such time that the people around us they know already Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. I remember, brethren, I was the one who came. I was the one who was the first Christian, born again Christian in our family. Now my sister, she's in Oakland. They already planted a church under every nation in Hamilton. My sister in the Philippines, she was also part of a big church there, and she's handling a small life group already. As we go deeper in the Word of God, when our life is changed, people around us will also change. And we we'll realize that there is God that they need to follow. Amen? Amen. Brethren, for me, from the bottom of my heart, spiritual heart, brethren, thank you for all of you. If your presence are not here, this church is useless. It's useless. But with your presence, 
we can still feel the joy of serving our God. Amen? Amen. So that's why, brethren, the moment that you miss Sunday, we are looking for you. We may not call you, but we are looking for you. Why? Because we want you to feel the presence of God and grow and grow and grow. Amen? At the end, brethren, you know our prayer. I remember Brother Mickey sometimes, or Brother J.R. Even they're very far in our church. But when they share something to our group, you can feel their love with our church members. And with that, brethren, we are praying to receive this kind of message also. To the people that they know our church. That it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight and in love. He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. That he loved his son us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his, of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. And lastly, to be put into effect when the time sweets their fulfillment, to be unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Brethren, this is the message of our God today. That I hope it stuck something in your mind that you're not only here being a member of the church, but we want you to grow. We want you to grow. Now I can see some of our members that you know, the future is there being a leader. And all you have to do is just to continue to share the word of God, listen to the word of God, so that you'll be the our God in the future. Amen? Let us all stand for our first prayer. Our Heavenly Father, oh God, your message has been delivered, O oh Lord God. How the importance of our members are needed in our church, O Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for all our church members, O Lord, that every Sunday they are coming here to hear your word, to give their service to you, Lord God. Not to lift up other people or not to serve other people, but to serve you, O Lord God. Father, we pray, O Lord God, that this message will help each and every one of us to go up, O Lord God, to know more about your work and to be used by you in the future, O Lord God. Father, we pray to lead us, O Lord God, in our life, not our own way, but your way, O God, to help us to live in this world. We ask this, O Lord God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all the people of God will say, Amen. 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 Amen.